eve of New Year's Eve now. Can Crazy. Can you believe it? I cannot. Whew. This year went by so quickly. I hope you have some plans, maybe mm -hmm. plans like me, sitting on your couch, a little champagne. Oh yeah, the I best mean, kind of plans. It's the best. Yeah. I think a lot of people might be doing that this year. Sweat pant plans. And I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, we have a lot of news to get to today. And we begin with the latest on the coronavirus numbers right here in Ohio. The state reporting another 484 new COVID hospitalizations in the last 24 hours. That is down slightly compared to yesterday, but it is above our 21 day average. Ohio also has more than 19,000 new COVID cases. Again, still above our average. Now we want to get to COVID in our schools, a hot topic. So many of you are listening and care about this with students. Well, now the Cleveland Metropolitan School District we know announced it's going remote next week. North Ridgeville and Avon Lake schools announced a reinstated mask mandate too. Emma Henderson talked to experts about how we can keep our children safe and keep them learning at the same time, which Emma has proven to be a bit difficult during these times. Definitely, Laura. The number one thing every expert said is that masking is crucial. They believe it will be the key to helping kids continue to learn in person. But there are other factors that come into play when districts make these decisions. Staffing is another crucial component. The Cuyahoga County Health Commissioner says he's been trying to talk to districts to make sure they have a plan in case there's a COVID outbreak or they see a large number of staff having to call out due to COVID. That would be a time where they would encourage the district to look into temporarily going virtual just until people are able to safely come back and work without risking exposure to others. They're also stressing the importance of child vaccination. The people who know, the people who are taking care of sick children and sick adults are turning to the schools, turning to parents and saying, please, let's use the tools that we have at hand it's just really important, I think, for schools to consider what resources they have uh, to keep kids safe and, uh, you know, use those resources uh, as best they can uh, to bring kids back as, as soon as they are able to. Coming up at six, hear from the health commissioner on all the decision making that goes on behind the scenes to decide how your kids return to school. Laura. And I'm sure a lot of effort, a lot of talks go into that. Emma, thank you so much. We'll see you back here at six. As we continue to battle the coronavirus, these winter months bring with them the potential impacts of another virus, the flu. I spoke with doctors about what we can expect this flu season and where we stand now. This year, the flu is making a comeback. After a mild flu season last year, Dr. David Margolius at Metro Health is seeing cases of influenza popping up again. What we saw last year was society essentially closed down. Um, everybody was wearing a mask. Everybody was... Uh, avoiding crowded indoor areas. Um, this year, it's, you know, we're not back to normal, but, but it's a lot more back to normal. According to data from the CDC, there were just over 4,500 cases of the flu reported from U.S. clinical labs in the week ending December 18th. That's a jump from two weeks prior when about 2,300 cases were reported. But what you've noticed in the South is that flu cases have been creeping up and we've been seeing the same. Dr. Amy Edwards at UH Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital says this isn't unusual. Usually January and February are when Dr. C peak influenza activity both in kids and adults, which can already keep hospitals busy. But it's the flu on top of COVID that could cause problems for hospitals. If Omicron continues to stretch things to and past capacity and then we have a normal flu season, that could be really bad. We're in a really tough situation. If more and more folks get flu on top of all the people who have COVID right now, it'll it'll definitely put a huge strain on the system. Something to keep an eye on. The flu and COVID have many of the same symptoms. There's a ton of overlap, you know, coughing, shortness of breath, fever, muscle aches, headaches, that sort of thing. Um, that's all that could be either or anything. The best thing the doctors say you can do, play it safe and get vaccinated for both viruses. If you have any symptoms of a contagious viral respiratory illness, do everybody a favor and stay stay home or, and wear a mask until you feel better. So to give you an idea of the flu in our area, the Ohio Department of Health has reported 13 flu associated hospitalizations so far in Northeast Ohio this flu season. Compare that to seven during last year's flu season and 2,702 during the 2019 to 2020 flu season. So we're still early on in the flu season here, but we can already see there's a big difference from yeah. what it was before COVID. Those numbers are pretty shocking, actually. Mm -hmm.
I mean, great perspective and kind of gives at least me a little hope that those numbers, that trend kind of continues on the low end. But, you know, right now, I know so many pharmacies, doctor's offices, there are plenty of flu shots to go around. Mm -hmm. And doctors obviously want you to get one ASAP if you, if you can. Yeah, last thing we need is more strain on the hospitals. Exactly. Isabel, thanks. Well, a new study shows the Johnson & Johnson booster shot provides high levels of protection against the Omicron variant and reduces hospitalizations. The study looked at 69,000 healthcare workers in South Africa and compared them to a similar group of unvaccinated people. The date showed improved protections from 63% to 85% where the Omicron variant is dominant. However, this study, it still needs to be peer reviewed. All right, now to your feet at five. The Cleveland Metropolitan School District is considering renaming several of its schools, some of which are named for late slaveholders. Before any of the names are changed, there will be community meetings in January and February for parents and students who want to give some feedback. The hope is to have the name changes in place for the 2022 to 2023 school year. We'll hear more about the schools involved coming up at 6. Well, weekly jobless claims were released today, hitting a 52-year low. The Labor Department says there were just 198,000 initial jobless filings last week, which was lower than they expected. When adjusted for weekly changes, the four-week average for claims is just over 199,000, which is actually the lowest level since October of 1969. The numbers are yet another sign of a tight labor market. Well, it looks like your chance at becoming a millionaire continues. There was no winner in last night's Powerball drawing, and that was the final drawing of the year. The jackpot now grows to $483 million, with the drawing set for Saturday night, the first day of 2022. And the Mega Millions jackpot is up to $221 million with a New Year's Eve drawing. So, Laura, I have to ask, any thoughts on what you would do if you're the lucky winner? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I actually told Nick Camino and Matt Wentz what I would do Ooh. yesterday with the money, but I, I really can't say here. Oh. Um, so let me come up with something. I think I would um, maybe buy a vacation home. Oh, I think okay. like a, a, something really nice on the water. What do you think? A getaway? That sounds nice. A getaway. Yeah. Like a really nice getaway. Somewhere warm. Somewhere warm. We need that. Oh, okay. That and Jason good. will be up with the weather soon, too, to tell us that we'll really need somewhere warm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm feeling lucky. Are you feeling lucky, Isabel? I think so. It's going to be a good year. I think it's going to be 2022. It's our year. Yeah. All yes. right. Still ahead. A year in review. We take a look back at some of the biggest headlines of 2021. And celebrating a milestone, how Pat Sajak just marked a big day in his career with Wheel of Fortune. All right, Jason, we want that warm getaway weather, but what do we have in store here? <laughs> well, somebody's going to be leaving the back door open for the last day of 2021 and the first day of 2022. You won't believe the numbers and what the forecast looks like in the days ahead. It's going to be an up and down roller coaster we do again, but 40s untapped for the rest of the evening. Cloudy sky, skies, mild temperatures, and a few sprinkles. Out there. We'll talk about that full forecast straight ahead.
As we look forward to a new year, we are also reflecting on some of the biggest stories to hit headlines this year. Yeah, Russ Mitchell takes us back to the start of 2021, looking at the stories making an impact nationally and right here in Northeast Ohio. 2021, a year full of ups. He's going, he's going, he's going! <laughs> Nick Chubb is in, touchdown! They will beat the Steelers in the opening round of the playoffs. And downs. The problem is we don't have enough vaccine. And that's adding to the issues many are having just to get a vaccination appointment. From glimmers of hope as the COVID-19 vaccine was distributed across the United States. It's still important for people in the eligible groups to sign up so that they can receive the vaccine as soon as the supply is able to accommodate them. Now our goal eventually is to vaccinate all Ohioans. The hope is that the vaccination will prevent them from getting sick and dying from it. And that, Russ, the good news is it appears that is working. Yeah, a little cold a little bit. There you go. It's as easy as that. It's as easy as that. I barely talked to To horror, as we all watch, rioters storm the U.S. Capitol building on January 6th. Today's event's being called an embarrassment, insurrection, an attempted coup, and disgraceful. Today has been a day that will go down in infamy in the history books, while many expected protests today. No one could have imagined it would go as far as it did. Things were relatively common in a split second. You saw the crowd rush the front towards the barricades and make their way up here. And it felt like the entire mood the whole day, it changed. Two weeks later, a newly elected president took office. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. Back here at home, we marked one year since the COVID stay-at-home order. Governor Mike DeWine says he has a game plan to get Ohio back to normal and lift statewide COVID-19 restrictions. And it all comes down to the numbers. We don't have a curfew anymore, so obviously it is working. The numbers are dropping. Any way we can help our hospitals is what we need to do. As vaccines gradually rolled out to the general public. So far, so good. After day one of the mass vaccination clinic in downtown Cleveland. They held a soft opening here at the Wolstein Center yesterday where about 1,500 people were vaccinated. And Russ Mitchell joining us now is Gojo at all concerned about having to cut back workers as things improve. Lester, I didn't get that impression at all. In fact, they believe that personal hygiene habits have changed because of the pandemic, and they expect business to remain at a pretty steady high from now on. In spring, a bit of normalcy returned as baseball fans were welcomed back to Progressive Field. We welcome you to opening day here on Channel 3. It's been a long time coming. Over a year ago, the last time that fans were here at Progressive Field. And Cleveland was on center stage as the NFL draft put our town in the national spotlight again. How about this night, Cleveland? Let's get this draft started. But I've been talking with people, and they've been saying, man, it just feels like football season. One of the things that's great is that the Browns, well, we do not have a top pick, meaning that right. we did well last season. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count one. Another moment in the push for social justice in the U.S. when Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin was convicted in the death of George Floyd. Justice for George means freedom for all. He was sentenced to 22 and a half years in prison in June. A new strain of the coronavirus called the Delta variant is now here in Ohio. Another milestone in the fight against COVID. The Delta variant is currently the greatest threat in the U.S. to our attempt to eliminate COVID-19. We ask the question every day, what's new? Well, today the answer is the name of our baseball team. We learned this summer would bring an end to an era as the Cleveland Indians announced this would be their final season using their nickname of 107 years. Most of the folks I talked to today said they're okay with the name change. This really seems like a nice transition, the right time to do it, and I think people are gonna get excited about it. After a year's delay because of the pandemic, the Tokyo Olympics opened, and a Northeast Ohio native fulfilled her Olympic dream. Incredible scenes from early this morning in Olmstead Township as they celebrate their hometown Olympian Katie Najad winning the women's pole vault in Tokyo. But the sudden withdrawal of Team USA's biggest star because of mental health concerns shined a new light on the athletes and their mental well-being. 
Biles said that she was under enormous stress, right. but still this came as a huge surprise. And you know, she had been saying that in the lead up to the event. Mm -hmm. From the moment, really, she arrived in Tokyo, she was saying, I feel like I have the weight of the world <sighs> on my shoulders. Labor Day weekend saw the return of a family favorite to downtown Cleveland. It was a packed house in and around Burke Lakefront Airport in downtown Cleveland today for the first day of the Cleveland National Air Show. After a year off because of COVID. And just eight months after vaccines were made available to adults, kids as young as five became eligible to get the shot. Mayor-elect Justin Beer. Don't tell me young people can't roll up their sleeves and make change in the city. In November, a changing of the guard at Cleveland City Hall. Raised on the city's east side, an unknown. Just 300 days ago, Justin Bibb becomes the city's 57th mayor. Bringing in a new era for our city that will officially start when we bring in 2022. It's hard to go straight to weather from there. So much happened in 2021. Mm -hmm. Watching that back, I have goosebumps all over my body. We literally had the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And here we are today. It's, it's I kept saying crazy watching. It's pretty heavy, this. right? It, yeah. it's, it is. It I mean, I, I know I'm speechless. That never happens, but. Um, <laughs> Anyway, Jason, I, I you know, I, I think the same thing when it comes when it comes to politics, when it comes to the health concerns we've had this year, when it comes to the weather department as well. We've had an outbreak as yeah. well mm -hmm. this past fall. So you're kind of wondering exactly if weather is going to be sort of volatile going into 2022. So far, models look like at least in the interim, by the time we get to this point next week, we're going to be talking about a major cold event moving into our region. But for now, we're going to remain mild overnight tonight and relatively cloudy as well. I'm not going to all out rule that we are not going to have any fog as well. We have patchy fog and dense fog in some areas this morning. So you can see your national design mark hour by hour forecast through the overnight hours. As we head to bed later on tonight, we'll have a few showers to work with. What we're going to have over the next 24 hours is going to be another warm front moving across the region. It's going to clash with another system late Friday night heading into Saturday. And this is what's going to really impact and bring in more wet weather to the area. Garden variety type showers through the overnight hours, a little bit of clearing around mid to late morning tomorrow and even into the afternoon. Notice these temperatures, guys. We should not be having these temperatures. This is all indicative of that warm front lifting north across the region. We'll keep an airtight seal in terms of cloud cover for the most part for our Friday. Remain with temperatures in the upper 40s and even low 30s. We're going to be expecting you're going to kind of take a tumble as that cold front moves through late Friday heading into Saturday or I should say late Saturday heading into early Sunday. So we're going to fast forward about 24 hours. Widespread showers likely on Saturday for the first day of 2022. For the most part, we're going to be hanging out into the upper 40s and perhaps even low 50s prior to daybreak. And then we fall thereafter with that frontal boundary moving on through. So this clash of systems is really going to have a leading edge of warm air and behind it's going to have cold air. So the shower activity you see on Saturday will quickly change over to a little bit of mix on Sunday. Most of that will be relatively along the lake areas and even into the evening hours. We're likely going to have even falling temperatures therefore as well. Rain shower accumulations. The bulk of it again is going to be Friday heading into Saturday night. And I think likely we're going to see these numbers here. All numbers, at least most of them below an inch, I think we're going to likely trend with some temperatures above an inch of rainfall by the time we head into early Sunday. So check this out. Final day of 2021. We're pushing near 50 tomorrow. Low 50s likely with widespread showers through the first day of 2022. We're falling into the 30s on Sunday and staying there. But notice what happens early Monday, guys. We could likely be talking about some teens and staying in the upper, thir upper 20s, low 30s, even by Monday of next week. So it's going to be a cold start. Yeah, cold start is right. You kind of told me about this earlier, and here we are, Jason. <laughs> well, I have planned you out for the rest of the week. As yeah, well. you have. Thank you for that. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, coming up, the latest on the Fast and Furious franchise, why The Rock says he won't be returning. That's next in your pop break. Plus, a wild cooking moment that maybe some of you can relate to. Jennifer Garner shares how she almost set her kitchen on fire.
again. <clears throat> I know. Get me out of here. Hi, Matt. I'm um, sorry. I did hear you. I'm sorry. I'm getting there. Uh, pop break things. Well, it's time for your pop break now. From the latest on the Fast and Furious franchise to a career milestone for one TV game show host. Kiara Cotton joins us to break it all down. Hey, Kiara. Hi, Isabel and Laura. Arnold Schwarzenegger is finally saying hasta la vista to his marriage. The former California governor and journalist Maria Shriver split more than 10 years ago. However, it wasn't until this week that a Los Angeles judge finalized their split. The couple wed in 1986, but when Schwarzenegger admitted to following a child with a member of their household staff, Shriver filed for a divorce in 2011. So why did it take so long? Well, that's still unclear. According to settlement papers, neither owes the other any spousal support, but they both reserve the right to seek it in the future. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson is making it clear that he won't be returning to the Fast and Furious franchise. He is also sharing his true feelings about his former co-star Vin Diesel, who called him out on social media. According to Johnson, the two had met privately and came to a clear understanding that there was no chance he would return. He's called Diesel's social media post an example of his manipulation. Johnson told the outlet that his goal all along was to end his amazing journey with the incredible Fast and Furious franchise with gratitude and grace. And switching over to the world of television, congratulations are in order for Wheel of Fortune host Pat Sajak. The 75-year-old game show host on Tuesday celebrated his 40th anniversary with the program. In honor of the career milestone, Sajak tweeted, when he started hosting Wheel, the top 10 TV shows included Dallas, Three's Company, The Jefferson, and The Dukes of Hazard. Ronald Wagan was in his first year as president, and the number one song was Olivia Newton-John's Physical. His daughter Maggie also shared a throwback picture of her father wishing him a happy wheel anniversary. Pat Sajak debuted on Wheel of Fortune in 1981. And last but not least, we want to send a special happy birthday to the kid from Akron. LeBron James turns 37 years old today. Laura and Isabel. All right, happy birthday. I was going to say, big deal. Yeah. Big deal for Cleveland, of course, talking about LeBron. Kira, thank you so much. Sure thing. All right, now to today's Worth the Watch. We are starting in Jennifer Garner's kitchen, where the actress says she almost lit the kitchen on fire, making an Ina Garten beef dish for Christmas. Her video actually shows the moment things went wrong when she tried to burn off the cognac she added to the pot. The issue, there we go, that's the issue. She actually doubled the recipe, and you can see she lit a lot of brandy on fire all at once. But in the comments, Garten assured her she almost sets her kitchen on fire every time, too. Oh, so man. funny.
You know what, I will go out on a limb here and say it's almost worth it to almost light your kitchen on fire if Ina Garten will go ahead. Isn't that a big deal? And recognize you. Yeah. Then again, it's Jennifer Garner, but still, right. I mean, I always, she's so candid and honest. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, we're on a first name basis. Right, um, Jen. Jen, um, in the kitchen. She's always Instagramming what she does in the kitchen, whether it goes wrong or right, and I like that, it's honest. Yeah, it is, it's very accessible. It's like all of us have been here, who has not? And I'm also sure that dish turned out amazing as well. So, win-win. Just don't double the recipe next time. Jen. Don't double the recipe, all right. don't light your kitchen on fire. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, coming up, we are getting closer to the Browns versus Steelers game. And now it sounds like it will be Big Ben's last. Nick Camino will have the latest. Plus, flight delays and cancellations, they continue. More on the holiday travel chaos as we head into the new year. Plus, a new travel advisory about cruise ships. And we are getting ready for the ball drop, a look at some of the creative ways cities across the U.S. celebrate. Mic check, Bab. Ready to roll. Here we go. What did you say? And now, live from WKYC Studios, this is What's New. Now to three things to know at 530. More local schools are updating their return to school policies after winter break amid a COVID surge. North Ridgeville and Avon Lake schools will now reinstate a mask mandate for all students and staff. The superintendents say this will allow students to remain in person. The mandate will stay in place until the end of January when the district will make adjustments if needed. And Cuyahoga County Executive Armin Budish and Commissioner Terry Allen are speaking out about COVID cases in the county, now reminding residents that the county leads the entire state in all categories with the most cases, the most hospitalizations, and the most deaths. So now they are asking the county to avoid large gatherings or parties for New Year's Eve, as the hospitals are already bursting at the seams. In a joint statement today, they said in part, quote, we are urging you to avoid these large gatherings, get vaccinated, get boosted, and mask up to protect the ones you love. It's not just COVID we have to worry about right now, but the flu as well. 
flu cases are on the rise in the U.S. After a record low last year, the CDC is tracking a growing number of cases across the country, a number that could reach pre-pandemic levels this season. 4,500 flu cases were reported at clinical labs nationwide for the week ending December 18th. That's up from about 2,500 cases just two weeks earlier. And experts say they expect those numbers to continue to go up over the next several weeks. The CDC urging everyone to get their flu shots. A lot of news to cover today. With that, we welcome you back to the second half hour of What's New. I'm Laura Queso. And I'm Isabel Lawrence. So good to be with you on this New Year's Eve Eve. Eve, another day. We're yeah. almost in 2022. So crazy. Close. Yeah. And now let's get to our top talker, shall we? Mm. Let's do it. All right, the Browns taking on the Steelers, getting closer by the day. Ooh, the game is set for Monday, but Baker Mayfield spoke earlier today. So now let's go ahead and bring in Nick Camino to break this all down for us, Nick. Hey, good evening, Isabel. Good evening, Laura. It's a big one on Monday night. I don't have to tell Browns fans this is a big time matchup at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. You think about everything that goes into this one divisional game, maybe Big Ben's final game in Pittsburgh. And you think about playoff implications. All of it is right there in this matchup. But first things first, I think we got to talk about the Browns quarterback, right? I mean, I think it's pretty clear Baker Mayfield has to play better. Duh, right? I mean, he just does. You think about that Christmas Day game in Green Bay. He threw four interceptions in the loss to the Packers. That's not going to cut it on Monday night on the road at Heinz Field. It just won't. And I think after hearing Baker talk today on a Zoom call with the media, he understands that. Yeah, there's been a lot of firsts for me this year, um, but that that comes with the territory and the position I'm in. Um, so I have to handle it the, the best I possibly can. And I know I've, I've said the, you know, the cheesy cliche comment, there's no manual on how to handle this and there hasn't been. So it's been uh, one day at a time throughout this season. All right, speaking of quarterbacks, remember last night here on 3 News, we were talking about the speculation that Monday night could be Ben Roethlisberger's final home game in Pittsburgh. The plan is for him to retire at the end of the season, whether that's the regular season or if the Steelers somehow make the playoffs. He says that this might be it. Well, this morning, Big Ben, he met with the media, and yeah, he hinted that that is likely a true story. If it is indeed my last regular season game there, it's going to be one of the most important games of my career. Um, I've been so blessed to play in front of um, the best fans in all the sports at the best venue and um, what better way to have a last regular season potential game than Monday Night Football against the division opponent? Well, hey, we will not miss Big Ben, right? A career record of 25-3-1 against the Cleveland Browns. We won't miss him at all. In fact, I think it would be a proper send-off that the Browns beat him one final time on Monday. Of course you would. Ooh. <laughs> all right. Fighting words there, Nick. <laughs> all right. Thank gotta you Got to do so what much. you got to do. <laughs> exactly. Nick, thanks. Yep. Well, flight cancellations are easing slightly as airlines work around the clock to get frustrated holiday travelers to their final destinations. But as of this morning, thousands of passengers are still stranded. I just want to get home. Although cancellations have eased somewhat, the misery index at airports is still sky high. Delta canceling 250 flights and announcing vouchers for wayward travelers. United scratching more than 150 flights, while Alaska Airlines and JetBlue proactively thinning their flight schedules. The rash of cancellations, a continuation of the holiday chaos caused by surging Omicron numbers and severe weather. Not being with my parents for New Year's Eve. Don't make me cry. The highest pain points felt at airports like Seattle, where unclaimed bags are piling up and with nearly two million people still flying daily. Travel expert Scott Key says airport headaches aren't likely to ease anytime soon. We can expect this to continue through the holiday season, through the new year, and it probably will not let up until the actual travel rush lets up. Flights not the only travel disrupted. The cruise ship industry suffering too. Nearly 90 ships now under some kind of CDC monitoring for COVID outbreaks. Howard Benjamin and his wife stuck at sea after the Queen Mary II confirmed it won't return to New York after a rash of COVID cases. We don't know how we're getting home yet. This as winter weather wreaks havoc across the country. Icy roads causing this four mile backup in Wisconsin. 20 million Americans are under severe weather alerts, while the Southeast braces for severe weather, including possible tornadoes like the one that ripped the roof off this civic center in Alabama overnight. 
And just today, the CDC issued an advisory urging all travelers, regardless of vaccination status, to again avoid cruise ship travel overall. You heard from that couple there saying they were stranded. I mean, it's some scary stuff to actually think about being in their shoes, especially at this time of the year when there's so much uncertainty. And of course, we're talking about a crazy increase in COVID cases. Yeah, and you have to think too, of any time of the year that you don't want your travel plans to be disrupted, it's probably right during the holidays when you just desperately want to get home, see family mm -hmm. after another challenging year. So you just have to feel for everybody in that position right now, including the airline and cruise ship workers too. Not ideal. No. Well, the annual Times Square New Year's Eve festivities are still on for fully vaccinated crowds which means the ball will drop as usual this year. Organizers tested the famous ball earlier today just to make sure it will be all ready to go. But LL Cool J will no longer be there to perform as he has tested positive for COVID. Uh, well, the ball drop did have us thinking about some of the other items that cities around the country drop during in the new year. It's pretty funny, Laura. Yeah, some places are getting pretty <laughs> creative. Yeah with items ranging from food to giant acorns, even a wrench, apparently. So here's a look at some of the interesting ones happening this year. Okay, take a look. In Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, they drop a 400 pound peep. <laughs> Yeah, I really like those actually. And that's because they are the home of the candy company that makes those fluffy sweets. And in Hershey, PA, of course, they raise a giant Hershey's kiss. Ooh, that's a yummy one. Okay, in Raleigh, North Carolina, they drop a 1,250 pound acorn made out of copper and steel, a tradition that's happened for more than 20 years. And then of course, in true Idaho fashion, they drop just a large potato. <laughs> this year's celebration will include musical artists and a ski and snowboard exhibition as well. So much fun. Yeah, but not to be outdone. Here in Northeast Ohio, there is of course a Chagrin Falls popcorn ball drop. This year, it's their largest one yet, nicknamed Jupiter. Hmm. It weighs more than 250 pounds. The popcorn ball is set to drop tomorrow night at midnight from the Chagrin Falls Village flagpole. That looks pretty amazing. That's a lot of popcorn, huh? How many bags or kernels do you have to pop to get I can't that imagine. much popcorn? What do they do with it after? I'm sure a lot of you know. I'm, I, I don't know. Wondering, can we break it apart and eat it? Is that an option? Like, I'm just trying to figure out how to I, get too. some popcorn. Yeah. Let us know. Serious, curious. Yeah. All right, still ahead. A need for blood donations and serious news. The Red Cross is seeing its lowest donations in a decade. We'll tell you how you can help save a life. Plus, a new mask mandate at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. What you need to know if you plan to go to any events in January. And Jason has a look at your New Year's Eve Eve forecast. Hey there, gang. I'm looking far and wide for snow and also looking for those cold temperatures. Mother Nature is going to roar back like a lion as soon as we start the first full week of January. I'll tell you about what those temperatures look like in the next forecast.
This evening, there is a call echoing across Northeast Ohio for blood donations. It's another side effect from the pandemic. Donations to the Red Cross have hit a low for months now, the lowest they've seen in more than 10 years. The high hospital demand matched with low donor turnout tipped a scale that can be fixed only one way, by giving blood. The Red Cross is asking for an hour of your day. Anyone can donate, but there is a special emphasis on type O blood, positive or negative, because it's a universal blood type. There's no other way to get it to them uh, than from human donors. Blood can't be manufactured and it can't be stockpiled. There is a limited shelf life for blood. You can use the blood donor app to schedule a donation on the website redcrossblood.org. Just type in your zip code to find the nearest locations to donate. And if you don't have access to a computer, just call the number here on your screen, 1-800-RED-CROSS. All right, let's take a turn now to the weather. I mean, this is an important forecast coming up. We're heading into yeah. New Year's Eve. Yeah, Jason, no pressure, but you are going to set the whole tone for yes, the oncoming you year. So. That's, that, you know what, that's fine. I could I take it all on my shoulders. Yeah, you can, afraid. though, Jason. Yeah. You really can. You know, some people want wet weather. They want cold temperatures. Some may even want snow, and I'm sure for some of the teachers, they're probably going to want a few snow days as well. We got plenty of those coming, I assure you. We still have many months left in the winter month, or at least the winter season, I should say. Take a look here. Your National Design Mart hour-by-hour hour forecast. What I'm calling for tonight, though, is just going to be some all-in-all -all garden variety type showers. What we have at play right now is a warm front lifting north across the region. This is going to bring some added cloud cover and also a bit more moisture into the atmosphere here. By the later portion of our Friday heading into Saturday, we're going to start to increase our shower threat even more and likely becoming widespread showers. You can see stopping the clock at about 11 p.m. where people are mostly getting to their destinations or just staying home, of course, for a Friday night. We're going to be in the low 50s for the most part, some areas in the upper 40s, but even for the first half of Saturday, that warm front is really going to lock in and we're going to have our temperatures elevated. Once the showers move on in, we're going to have some rain cooled air accompanying that and we're going to have a due north wind coming in at the surface. Saturday evening around 5, 6, perhaps even 7 p.m. still talking about some shower activity and then next comes the cold front. This will quickly change over to a mix, a rain mix and even some eventual snow by the time we open up the door for Sunday. Sunday is going to feel a lot different than tomorrow and also on Saturday. This is when winter is really going to show its ugly face here. Even around 7 a 8 a.m. when you're trying to get to service, we're still going to have some scattered snow showers and cold temperatures flirting with the upper 20s and even low 30s. As for now, we're still expecting light to no accumulations across the region, but of course visibility in those snow showers is going to be cut down significantly. Some of these rainfall accumulations, this is the RPM model showing there. I think we're going to have some elevated rainfall accumulations anywhere from maybe a half inch up to an inch, some ice hit amounts even above that. The bulk of that time frame for the most accumulations is going to be between Friday night and Saturday night before we start to get that switch over. I do want to show you, though, the month of December, daily high temperatures. Of course, the red is indicating lots of above average temperatures from day to day across the month of December. And look at this. I want to point this out. So far in the month of December, our average high temperatures, not counting today, have averaged 47.7 degrees. What we should normally be is 40.6 degrees. Coming up at 6 p.m. on what's, what's next, I'm going to be talking to you about at least what matters most. I'm going to be talking to you about what it looks like in the days ahead for January and also beyond that. But as far as your Union Home Mortgage seven-day outlook, showing it's going to be a cold start to the work week next week, Lauren Isabel. Ooh. Very cold indeed. All right, things finally getting a little chillier and more winter-like here, Jason. Yes, indeed. All right, thank you so much. It's time to see what's clicking in Cleveland. For that, we bring in our digital anchor, Stephanie Haney. Hi, Steph. Hi, Laura. You know, we are seeing this at a lot of places now, and Rock and Mortgage Fieldhouse is the latest place to put its own mask mandate in effect with those COVID cases rising. So starting tomorrow, people ages two and up will have to wear a mask at all times while inside. That includes at your seats. The only exception is if you're actively eating or drinking. Some events, like certain concerts, may also require proof of a COVID vaccine or a negative COVID test. You can check their website for any extra requirements like that. And if you show up with something that doesn't work, they'll have free ones on site for you. So don't worry about that. Now, if you get an email about a class action settlement from Old Navy, it is OK. It is legit. It's a settlement from a lawsuit accusing Old Navy of misleading customers about how much they were saving on advertised sales. So if you shopped there between November of 2015 
all the way up to the start of this month. You can make a claim for either $5 or $10 in gift certificates. We have the details on who accounts for what and the link to sign up for that on WKYC.com. And with just two days left in 2021, I was thinking about New Year's resolutions, so I asked our What's New Facebook group family their thoughts. A lot of people say they are not into resolutions for lots of reasons because sometimes the goals can seem too overwhelming. Now, several of you tell me that you want to focus on health and fitness. That's very popular. Get that weight to match what's on your driver's license. Someone said that. And we do have our viewers cheering each other on on this one, which is really cool to see. Now, here is a really specific one. Penny Dean Lovejoy is going to finally go through her mom's things in her basement. And she wants our love to get through it, so you got it, Penny. We are sending you all of the hugs and the love on this one. What do you ladies think? Laura, Isabel, are you New Year's resolution people? You know, I think I am. I like to try to at least set a little goal for myself, not be too hard on myself if I don't attain it. Yeah. But I think maybe for next year, reading more books for fun. Mm, oh, wow, that's pretty good. Thank you. Yeah. Nice way to just unplug. Yeah, you know? unwind yeah, at the end unwind. of a long day. I like that. Yeah, I want to make that a habit. How about you? So I, th I thought about this even before Steph asked. Um, I want to explore one new place in Northeast Ohio Ooh. a month. Oh. It has to be COVID friendly. Um, if you have any ideas, let me know. Tweet me, Instagram, Facebook. What, please let me know, seriously. Um, and the other one is not to sweat the small stuff because oh. I, I tend to do that. Mm. And Steph, I think you and I talked about this last year at this time, but what do you have for this year? Anything? We did. You know, I go back and forth. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't make them. This year is the year, though, I am going to put a dent in my student loans and I have a strategy. I'm going to tweet nice. at Elon Musk every day and I'm going to hope <laughs> he either pays them off or he makes my Dogecoin investment you know, come to fruition, because that's really the only way it's going to happen. But fingers crossed. I'm optimistic about it. Fingers, toes, everything crossed. I'm optimistic for you, too. Steph, thanks. Thanks. Next, kickstarting your New Year's resolution. A look at what you need to know if improving your finances is at the top of your list. Plus, a big surprise with a big check. See how a Fairview hospital worker got a little holiday bonus today.
As we look ahead to 2022, we want to help you get ready to kick off your New Year resolutions on the right foot, too. If you're looking to make some changes with your finances, Danielle Wiggins has what you need to know. COVID-19 has taught us anything can change, including our finances. But how can we try and get ahead in the new year? Daryl Clater, a registered representative with Securities America in Twinsburg, gave us some tips, starting with the reminder that tax season is right around the corner. Last year was a, se- a tax season like I've never seen in 40 years, uh, with so many variables uh, that were changed during the tax season. So I would encourage people, number one, to be organized. Remember, we still collected child tax credits and stimulus checks in 2021. And speaking of children, if you have a student preparing for college, consider doing the community college route first before spending money on the big universities. Something Clater says is growing in popularity. I see a lot of students that are attending four-year institutions and they're running up $100,000, $200,000 tabs on their student loans. And that's something that's going to come back to haunt them for many years. What about the housing market? We're hearing that it's improving, but enough to make 2022 a good year to buy? The mortgage rates are still relatively modest, even though the Federal Reserve says that they're going to raise interest rates a couple times next year. Interest rates are still dramatically less than they were, particularly many years ago. And the last tip is stay optimistic. We all know finances can be the most stressful part of life, but even experts like Clater say there is no need to panic. That's good news. That's great advice. Some helpful information there that I think may or may not be slightly more reliable than tweeting at Elon Musk. Well, yes, this is a good point. but yeah, finances can be that's, finances can be very stressful. But yes. going back to New Year's resolutions, don't sweat the small stuff. If it's small, you know, I could use that there. But uh, good advice, and I wish us all a 2022 full of tweets back from Elon Musk or something like that. Yeah, let us all be inundated with Elon Musk tweets and money. Oh, that'll be special. That'll be very special. Anyway, next, a special surprise for an Olmstead Falls resident. You won't want to miss this. Publishers Clearinghouse is helping one family start the new year off on the right foot. Plus ahead on What Matters Most at 6, EMS troubles amid a surge in COVID cases. The impact local cities are now seeing on patients and staffing. And now for your pop quiz question, and this is about Lucky New Year's Eve foods. Okay, in Spain, what do they eat 12 of at midnight for good luck? Is it A, black-eyed peas, B, grapes, or C, olives? We'll have the answer after the break.
All right, welcome back. Now, before the break, we asked in Spain, what do they eat 12 of at midnight on New Year's Eve for good luck? The options, black eyed peas, grapes, olives. So Laura, what's your best guess here? I am feeling very confident it's olives, C. Ooh. Really, it's wrong. No, 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 it is grapes. I, I, okay, I mean, that was my second guess. I think, yeah, I think we were all on the same page. It yeah. probably was not beans, because they're so small. No, no, that wasn't it. It didn't really make sense. It doesn't make sense, yeah. but I, I'm surprised. You knew the answer you said, though. I did, I did spend some time in Spain, so I had heard of this little tradition before. But I think they're also, grapes are easier to pop, yeah. twelve of them too, good than point. olives. So. All right, it's good luck, so maybe yeah. I'll do it too. We'll do it. All right, now it's time for Show Us Something Good. The Publishers Clearing House's Price, Prize Patrol is back on the road, and today they had a special surprise for one Olmsted Falls resident. Scott Cerny was given $200,000. He wasn't at home when PCH showed up to surprise him, but they gave his wife quite the shock. Eventually, the team caught up with him at work at Fairview Hospital, where Scott told us he plans to use the money to take care of some bills and go on a really nice vacation. Congratulations, Scott. Well deserved. Yeah, that makes me smile. Yeah. Good one. All right. Thank you so much for watching. What's new? What matters most starts right now. Under pressure, hospitals, EMS, and fire departments all pushed to the brink as COVID cases spread across Northeast Ohio. Tough decisions. Stay home or go to class and wear a mask. How local school districts are trying to navigate safely teaching our children amid the surging pandemic not just COVID. But it's a growing threat and we do want people to take it seriously by getting the flu shot. The pandemic is just one piece of the current health situation as doctors now see a rise in the flu. We'll break down the difference between the two. And wild weather. From the milder temperatures across Northeast Ohio to the snow, wind and hail facing other parts of the country so far this winter. From the WKYC studios, this is What Matters Most. Good evening and thanks for being with us tonight. I'm Laura Queso. Tonight we begin with skyrocketing COVID cases that continue to ripple through our healthcare system. As Mark Namick reports, staff shortages at hospitals 